All right, let's get started. So how many of you know who's Veritas? What does Veritas do? All right, so those of you who do not know, uh, Veritas is the market share leader in backup and recovery software. So we're basically the number one company in this industry. And as you can see from this slide, <clears throat> industry analysts and our customers love Veritas. Uh, we are leader in Gartner's Magic Quadrant for 17 years. That's a huge vote of confidence from uh, industry analysts. And 95% of Fortune 100 and 87% of Fortune 500 companies use and trust Veritas to protect their most important asset, which is their data. And globally, we have more than 80,000 customers. So that's a lot of vote of confidence from our customers and our users. But one important number that I want to point out in this slide is that uh, we protect more than 800 data sources. This is unique to Veritas, and it has a huge value for our customers because this gives our customer a peace of mind that uh, no matter what the data source is, uh, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, physical, virtual, large or small application, one single vendor, Veritas, can protect it all. So it's a huge value for our customers. <clears throat> so Veritas saw the cloud trends very early on, and that's, about, uh, that's why seven years ago, Veritas and AWS decided to partner up. And as you can imagine, when two uh, customer-obsessed companies partner up, you will see some great solutions. So today, using our uh, joint solutions, on average, our customer saves around 95% on storage cost, 95% on networking cost, and around 40% on compute cost. Exactly how we do that, I'll go over that in the next few slides. Another unique thing what Veritas does, and it has huge value for our customers, is that we are the only vendor that has a joint solution in every use case that AWS Storage offer. Again, this is unique to Veritas and has a huge value for our customer because uh, this gives them this one-stop shop for all their storage use cases, which is a huge value for our customers. Uh, and all our solutions, they go through a rigorous, well-architected review process to make sure our customers are getting you know, state-of-the-art solution from both Veritas and AWS. So we speak with a lot of our customers, and we ask them, okay, what kind of issues and challenges they run into? Uh, and if I have to sum up all their answers in one single word, in my opinion, that would be complexity. Because at the end of the day, it's complexity that makes it very difficult for them to uh, manage their environment. It makes it very expensive. Uh, they end up spending a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of resources, and still the environment is not very safe. Um, and Veritas... Um, all right, so what is that complexity that we're talking about? So we know data is growing exponentially. It's coming from all kinds of sources, and we also know that enterprises are deploying more and more applications these days to run their businesses. And some of those applications are running on physical environments, some on virtual, and some on containerized environment. And uh, protection of application in a heterogeneous, hybrid, multi-cloud environment is pretty complex. Uh, one solution could be where a customer can just have a, a point solution on-premise and have multiple point solution uh, in each cloud. But that will add just more layer of complexity. It will make their environment even more expensive. Uh, they will spend more time and more resources because now they're dealing with multiple vendors, multiple support teams, and uh, they will have to train their employees for multiple uh, vendor products. So it becomes more and more complex from there. And as if these internal problems were not enough, all the large enterprises and even small enterprises, they have to worry about ransomware attacks uh, every minute of the day. And I literally mean every minute of the day because we have all heard uh, scary statistics around ransomware. I think every 19 seconds or 11 seconds, somebody's getting hit with ransomware. So uh, these are some of the huge challenges that our customers have. So what is Veritas doing to solve these challenges uh, that our customers are facing? And if I have to use, again, one word to describe what we're doing is we're providing simplicity in their environment. So exactly how are we doing that? So first of all, from our one single unified platform, we're protecting all kinds of data sources, whether it's old or new applications, small or large, multi-tier applications, uh, physical, virtual, uh, containerized environment. Everything is protected from one single unified platform. And it does not matter to us uh, what environment that is, if it's on-prem, on-premises, cloud, hybrid, multi-cloud, whatever you got, we protect it all from our single unified platform. And one more important thing that we provide from this single unified platform is visibility and IT analytics across all these environments. And this is a huge value for our customer because now they have applications running all over the place. 
if they're not able to see them all in one console on one single platform, uh, they cannot see it, which means they cannot measure it, and they cannot manage it. So it's a huge deal for our customer, huge value for, for them uh, to have this uh, uh, visibility across all these environments. And our platform is very flexible. Uh, depending on how you're architecting your environment, if you want our platform as a physical appliance, it is available. If you want our platform as a virtual appliance, it is available. And if you need our, apply, uh, our platform as a cloud-native, containerized, Kubernetes-based uh, microservices architecture, that is available as well. So it's extremely flexible. And we're automating more and more operations and processes that uh, all the large enterprises go through on a daily basis. And we're, we're automating it. Uh, a lot of that is event-driven automation. We're simplifying our architecture. We're, we have simplified uh, licensing as well. Uh, let's talk about cost reduction because in this environment, in this economy, cost is on top of everyone's mind. So very uh, quickly, let's spend a few minutes on that. So how do we save uh, money to our customers? So when we're protecting application and data before we move it to the storage, we are reducing the size of the data significantly. We, re we can reduce the size of the data up to 80, 90, 95% uh, using our deduplication technology, which is uh, among the, the best technologies that are out there. Uh, in some cases, we have even uh, reduced the size of the data more than 95%. Uh, but we have customers who have publicly spoken about that. It's available on our website. They publicly uh, mentioned that they were able to reduce the data up to 95%. And as you can imagine, when you can reduce the size of your data uh, significantly, you will save a lot of money on storage, no matter what tier of uh, storage you're using. And you're going to save a lot of money on uh, networking, because now you're, uh, you're moving fraction of data from on-prem to cloud, between different clouds, bet between different regions, so you are gonna end up saving a lot of money. And a lot of our customers who are deploying this uh, Kubernetes-based containerized architecture, they're saving a lot of money on compute as well. So uh, huge uh, uh, cost reduction for our customers. Speaking of cost reduction, DR and migration tools are also included in our platform. You don't have to buy any additional licenses. You can automate and orchestrate this entire process of DR and migration. All the tools that you need to do that are also part of our uh, license and part of our platform. Uh, and uh, using our DR tool, we basically uh, cover all kinds of RPOs and RTOs, whether it's hours, minutes, and seconds, everything is covered, so we offer tools for that. And last but not least, ransomware protection is also included in our platform. You do not have to buy anything additional for that. So it's a huge value for our customer. So this one, one single slide, honestly, uh, talks about solution to a lot of those problems that our customers are running into. So I mentioned earlier that uh, we have this uh, uh, unique value that we offer, that we are the only vendor who has a joint solution in every use case that, a, a use case that AWS Storage offers. These are those use cases. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes to just go over uh, some of these use cases. And then I have a few reference architecture diagram, which I'll just you know, breeze through very quickly, because my goal is to just show you how we have architected that. And for additional questions, I would like you guys to come over to our booth, and we can have more detailed conversation. We can even probably do some whiteboarding with you guys and answer a lot of your questions. So let's start with backup and long-term retention. Um, I mentioned ransomware is part of our platform. So exactly how do we do that? Uh, a lot of you probably already know uh, uh, NIST framework, National Institute of Standard and Technology Framework. Uh, they provide a very comprehensive framework how enterprises should protect uh, their environment. So we follow the, the same framework, and we focus heavily on protect, detect, and recover uh, pillars of that framework. And under this protect pillar, again, what I mentioned, that you should be able to protect all your uh, data sources, all kinds of applications, because if you're not able to protect everything, uh, it's a huge hole in your security posture, and you don't want to do that. So you want to be able to protect everything, and then you can move your data to either immutable storage, air gap storage, however you want to architect that. And while you're moving this data, we also leverage our uh, very tight uh, and deep integration with a, uh, AWS Private Link, which no matter where you're moving the data from, uh, it keeps the data internal. Uh, it, it uses internal IP addresses. It never gets exposed to external internet. So it reduces the attack surface on your data. Uh, also, during this whole time, uh, Veritas is uh, using our AI, uh, artificial intelligence technology. We continue to monitor any anomalies. And if there are any anomalies, we can run malware scan on that. Once we run malware scan on this, 
if the copy is clean, now you have a last known good copy, which you can, which you can use to recover just few servers or an entire data center uh, on AWS. And you can automate and orchestrate this whole process, and all the tools that you need to do that are already available with our platform. Predict predictable and low storage cost. So with AWS, we're offering this service uh, where it is basically cloud-based uh, backup storage as a service, which is very tightly integrated with our platform. So it's basically uh, a seamless secondary storage option, which is managed by Veritas for Veritas customers. So what is the value for Veritas customer uh, in using this storage? Uh, like I mentioned, uh, it's predictable and low storage, so, uh, low storage cost. Because we, uh, our subscription is based on backend terabyte, which means we're charging our customers on the data after deduplication. And I already went over that we can reduce the size of the data up to 80, 90, 95%, and sometimes even more. So huge cost saving for our customers. Also, the puts and gets are included uh, in that uh, subscription charges. So egress and ingress are included. So if you guys are doing every month or every quarter, every six months, some kind of rehearsal for your DR and migration, uh, you don't want to end up with a surprise bill. So this is, you know, it makes it a storage cost very predictable. So huge value for our customers. I already talked about whether it's a small or large application, multi-tier application, uh, Veritas protects it all. DR and migration tool, uh, the tools for any RPO and RTO are included with our platform. We can automate this entire process, all the tools you need to automate, that, those are available. We also offer service to move those very complex multi-tiered application either from on-prem to the cloud or between the cloud. So uh, obviously those you know, multi-tier application which has web, app, and DB layer, sometimes the database layer is physical, app and web layers are either virtual or even containerized in some cases. A migration of those are very difficult, uh, so we offer tools that you can, uh, which helps you migrate them without uh, interruption. So huge value for our customer. And also we offer assessment, because what happens is that a lot of folks who are moving from on-prem to cloud, uh, on-premises, they are using you know, only fraction of compute which they have purchased, and only fraction of storage which they have purchased. Now when they're going to cloud, they don't want to get the, you know, again, make the same mistake and get more compute than they need and more storage than they need. So we provide the assessment. Uh, we, we find out exactly how much compute and storage you're using. And then based on that, we recommend uh, what servers uh, you should use in the cloud and how much storage you should provision in the cloud. And that saves our customer a lot of money. If you want to see, uh, you know, a demo of how exactly do we do that, come over to our booth. Uh, we can show you live exactly how we do that. It's a, it's a very cool dashboard where we do that. High availability. So a lot of enterprises have th those tier zero and tier one applications, which they just cannot afford to go down. If, if those applications do go down, they're going to lose a lot of money, reputation, and depending on the industry, it could be human life. Um, so if you're moving that kind of application to cloud, you want to make sure that they are resilient, and they are uh, resilient even if a whole availability go, uh, zone goes down. So a lot of you probably are aware that typically in the cloud, block storage is uh, it's connected with the availability zone. It's tied to a single availability zone. And if that availability zone goes down, uh, your application will go down too. So we offer tools where we provide shared storage across multiple availability zone or even across regions. So if an entire AZ goes down or uh, the region become inaccessible, your application will stay, still stay up in a different region. A very quick side note, um, I was in Europe last month. Uh, it was a conference, so many people from different countries were in one place. And I was surprised that a lot of them were talking about energy crisis, potential power outages uh, in different parts of Europe and other countries. So it's not that impossible that uh, an entire region or AZ becomes inaccessible. So this tool has more value, I believe, in that kind of scenario. So if you are architecting your tier one, tier zero applications in cloud, make sure you come to our booth, ask us about you know, how can we uh, help it provide resiliency across AZ and across region. Um, and also while we're, uh, improve, uh, while we're providing resiliency, we we'll also help improve the performance of that application. Uh, we have a whole detailed white paper in which we moved an, an Oracle database to AWS, and we were able to improve the performance. So that white paper details all the, the numbers that you need to uh, understand how much uh, was the performance improvement. 
And last but not least, uh, archiving. Basically, it's compliance with legal and federal local regulations, so it's part of our uh, e-discovery portfolio. Like I mentioned, I'm going to just breeze through these uh, uh, reference architecture diagram because the idea is just show you very high level how they're architected. And for more details, if you want to have, if you have more specific questions based on your own environment, come over to our booth and we'll basically whiteboard with you and give you answers based on your environment. So in this uh, diagram, what you're seeing on the left-hand side, uh, we're moving from on-premises data center. We can protect all the data, all kinds of applications. And in, uh, on Ver Veritas platform, we deduplicate that and then we move it to AWS storage. All storage tiers uh, within AWS are supported. Uh, and when we're, uh, you have multiple options to move this data, you can use regular internet, use VPN on that uh, for additional protection. Uh, AWS Direct Connect is supported, and we already talked about the value of AWS Private Link. Your data stays internal no matter where you're moving it from uh, to AWS Cloud. So huge value for our customer, especially financial customer, healthcare customer, uh, they, they love AWS Private Link. This is the service I mentioned, a seamless cloud storage as a service. So under the cover, it's AWS storage, which means it's uh, virtually, it's limitless uh, uh, scale. And the value that uh, our customer get out of that is basically uh, for, uh, which aligns with their ransomware strategy is ransomware protection strategy is air gap ransom, uh, air gap storage, immutable storage that is available in the cloud. And as we mentioned, uh, it's very predictable cost for our customer. As you can see on the top left-hand corner, uh, BETB. So we're basically, our subscription is based on back-end terabyte, which means we're charging the customer based on the data after it's deduplicated. So our customers save a lot of money on that. And we already talked about it, that ingress and egress uh, charges are included in the subscription as well. We already gone over the National Institute of Standard and Technology, NIST framework. This is uh, uh, predominantly the, the way how all the enterprises are protecting their environment from ransomware. We follow the same framework, and we focus heavily on protect, detect, and recover. And I mentioned in protect, you want to be able to protect everything. You don't want to leave anything behind. Otherwise, that's, that's the weak link in, in your environment. This shows our deep integration with S3 object lock and private link, which helps us provide uh, this uh, ransomware protection solution with AWS. By the way, I keep mentioning deep integration. Uh, come to our booth and ask us what do, what do we even mean by deep integrations, because we sometimes use more APIs than uh, a person with, who just coming up with an average solution. So um, we have detailed conversation where AWS PMs have mentioned that, hey, your, your integration with AWS storage is far better than a lot of other folks, and that's why we get better dedupe ratios and better storage uh, 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 utilization in AWS. So talk to us about that uh, in our booth. Disaster recovery and migration, I mentioned, it's part of our uh, platform, it's, everything is included. So if you want to recover few servers or the entire data center in AWS, you can use that. Everything that you need to do that is available in our platform, uh, and you can automate this entire process. No additional licenses, so huge cost saving for our customers. Um, we have customers who have publicly mentioned that uh, when they use uh, their disaster recovery site instead of on-premises, they use AWS as a disaster recovery site. They were able to save around 80% on, on uh, their disaster recovery uh, 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 disaster recovery solution, basically. So huge value for our customers there. This is the solution that I mentioned, that if you have a tier one, tier zero application, and if you want to provide resiliency across availability zone and across region, this is a solution that provides shared uh, storage across AZs and across region, huge value for those tier zero and tier one application. Archiving and compliance, uh, so we monitor communication, social media feed, files, and make sure uh, you, got, you stay in compliance and according to the regulation, whether it's federal regulation, local. Uh, so uh, that solution is available. You can use it either on premises and use AWS storage, or you can uh, put the whole solution in AWS Cloud. So that is depending on how you want to architect that. And last but not least, this is the, uh, this is the tool that I mentioned that provides visibility across all these environments. It's, it's amazing, you will be surprised. Come over to our booth, we'll show you, the, give you the demo, and you will understand what is the value, it, how important that is that if you're running your application in different environment, you wanna be able to see them 
in one dashboard, and this, that's exactly what this tool provides. So that's enough. For, uh, that's uh, you know all from me. So um, my goal was here to just give you the high level what value our solution provides. So I would welcome everyone who have any other questions, either after the session, come to us or come to our booth, and we'll give you uh, you know more details, and we can whiteboard uh, according to your environment. Now I know a lot of you just want to hear from our real life customer. What value are they getting from our joint solution? So for that, uh, Rick and Dr. Shafiq, you want to come over? So I want to introduce Dr. Rob. Um, he is not only a clinical physician, but also the CIO and probably one of the biggest drivers in healthcare today, which says a lot to me because look at what we've been going through for the past three years in terms of how important healthcare has been to our safety, our stability as a country. And you did something that no one else has ever been able to do. A lot of clinics, a lot of healthcare systems have components of their technology in the cloud. You were actually able to move your core EMR and most of the clinical applications into AWS. What drove that decision? <laughs> First of all, thank you for all of you who made it. Because this is very difficult to find. <laughs> so, uh, second, uh, I don't know where your booth is. What do, what's the booth number? 205. 215. Where is it here or? In the expo. It's in the expo hall, 215. Please go. Uh, so uh, you know, we live in a very uh, different world. When I was younger, uh, people would rob you and take your money or take your, uh, what do you call it, gold. Uh, so now, uh, and when we were younger, uh, I used to learn poetry. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. I still remember it because we had to memorize it. I can't make my entire team to memorize everything from A to B, B to C, C to D, E to Z, or Z, which if you're in a British society where you grow up, because you have to bring the data back. You can't. Uh, and the speed of doing things has also increased. So. Everybody has gone to the cloud. It's like, you know, uh, everybody has a color TV and you don't. Uh, everybody had a cell phone and I did not. World has moved on. Healthcare is very complex and is very regulated. And since it's a regulated industry, it's hard for it to make choices. So somebody has to be, uh, how do you say that, uh, bold. Now, I didn't say crazy, but bold. <laughs> And so when you're asked the question, so I took an electronic health record by the name of Epic. I'm the first customer in the world to actually build it in AWS. But Epic doesn't work by itself. You also have to take other applications to the cloud. So why did we do that and what made it? My CEO, Mike Dandorf, is a good man. I hope he doesn't fire me this week, but uh, uh, what I'm saying is that to do all the automation to do all the hard analysis, you have to have compute power. Compute power is not your data, in your data center anymore. Second, if you buy a server and you want to use half of it, you just can't cut half of it on the side and give me half a server. How many, uh, nobody can do that. But in the cloud, you can decrease the compute on a Saturday, Sunday, on weekends, at time, and decrease your cost. Because the bloody economy is making us very cost conscious. I just told a guy, can I get a job in which I just get to travel uh, and uh, buy people drinks and take naps till 10 a.m.? So those jobs are not available anymore. But if you can get one, I would like it too. <laughs> Having said that, uh, I'll take one more minute and I'll shut up after that. When you're asked that question, why are we doing all this? So we're doing all of this so that we can take care of our communities. We can take care of other people who work in our institution, doctors, nurses, front-end people, janitors. And also, we can take care uh, of the people who come to see us and the communities that we live. Why? Because data is ever-expanding. And the only place where you can analyze it, get inside, 
Healthcare is so complex that the ETLs, to take the data out, to make it right, and then there are bad people. Bad people means uh, friends of mine who would like my data. Even though there's nothing interesting in my data, I'm five feet, four inches tall, not good looking, but they will still want my data. So that's the world we live in. That's the reason we made the decision to go to the cloud. And I'm lucky that I have a great team. So it's not that me, I'm like a genius or something. Uh, but the team that has been with me for the last 14 years, job to job, we have a pain in our heart and we want to make a difference. That's the reason we went to the club. So there's no magic to it. We just put our mind to it and we did not take no for an answer. I usually don't. My mother used to call me relentless. <laughs> So that's the answer. I believe it. And uh, the lesson that we learned from this and working with y'all is that there are critical independencies, right? So yeah. it's not just one core application. Everybody, especially in our industry, everybody wants to talk about the EMR, the EMR, EMR. We found that there was 38, 39 applications that had to move with it. And how do you move it in, without causing disruption or outages to your healthcare system? That's no easy feat. Yeah, so... And you had to learn all those lessons. Uh, in, the the process. World, in the world of, uh, uh, I don't know uh, which industry you are from, but if you're in healthcare, we buy applications whenever we feel like. So we, have, we had about 634 applications when we went live. Uh, we got rid of 324. Nobody complained. Wow. They didn't even notice you on. You see, we, we, we were paying for things, right? So this is a process that you go through that makes you better. And also you will find out 40% of your data is transparent. That means not even encrypted. Yet if you go to your own institution and go ask your lab data, they are transparent. There is no bloody encryption on it. So think about the vulnerabilities. Why do you think people attack us all the time? It's like we have a sign in our back, point here. That's why we get attacked, because we, we have to be open. Healthcare has to be open. People come for in a very vulnerable moment. We can't put gates, security, and totally close. We can't do that. But you're right. Uh, it was a hard job convincing people. Like some softwares can't even be taken to the cloud. Mm. So you have to encapsulate them and other ways to take it. Go ahead, man. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, so how has the pandemic changed how you use the cloud? So the pandemic uh, changed us forever. There are many things in the United States that has happened over the last 30 years that has changed us forever. Uh, the biggest thing was that we all got scared. Sec second, we didn't know what to do about it. And as doctors and nurses and caregivers, we tried our best to save we ourselves got sick and died. Uh, we didn't know, we didn't understand, and we didn't have a, a database system within our uh, counties and our health departments and state department even to get data moving from one place to the other place. We didn't even have a collection system. I was in Chicago where I was working, then I went to other place. So it suddenly forced us to innovate. Somebody said, don't let a good crisis go to waste. So the pandemic forced us to think differently. Uh, and also, everybody talks about value-based care and other things. But to this day, the money maker for our health systems is still our surgeries. That's how we get paid. And we're trying to change that. Uh, uh, so this pandemic, even though it's a horrible thing and still people are dying from it, it helped us to find solutions using technology, using cloud, using data, and actually come through for our clinicians, for our caregivers, for our employees who can work remotely and the community that we serve. So all of a sudden, IT became front and center so that the vehicle can go forward. So that's what happened, nothing else. I think it was one of our finest moments where being a technology professional, not a clinician, we always kind of felt like the wind beneath the wings. Yeah, yeah. But during this pandemic, we really demonstrated our value to patient care, and I think that's built a better partnership across. 
Um, so I'm, we, everybody talks about ransomware. I'm tired of talking about ransomware. No, no, we can't but talk. it's a real threat, right? It's increasing 311% year over it's year. It's an industry. Uh, there are, there's job openings for it. Yeah, I found out, actually. Um, we talked to the, I was talking with the government, and, you know, the sanctions that we put on North Korea, they were actually able to bypass those sanctions and generate yeah. $1.5 billion for their missile program, even with the sanctions. Oh, yeah. Them. And they're specifically targeting healthcare. And the result really is that cybersecurity costs are going up and or there's less people underwriting that. How has that impacted yeah. um, your, your design and your cloud concerns? Is that one of the main reasons yeah. why you chose to partner with Veritas? And yeah, I'm going to talk about Veritas and I'm going to talk about ransomware. I'll also tell you if you have not bought them, go buy them. But before I endorse that, I'm going to tell you, like I told you, people used to steal gold. Mm -hmm. or they rob you, take your money, 20 bucks. People don't want to do that anymore. So we live in the United States. Even though we are, I love traveling all over the world. I've been to South America and other places. The problem is that there is something known as intellectual property. And what people want to do is to take it away. And your lifetime that you spend on R&D, they don't have to do it. Or they want to understand that what is the next secret thing we are doing or other industrialized nations are doing or other scientists are doing, take it away and benefit from it. So one of the curse or bad thing of compute power increasing is that somebody can come from the back and take it away. Or there is a new industry that came out in the olden days, I could have been a pirate. <laughs> But uh, that profession is a little gone. Well, I like sailing, so therefore I said that. Uh, and I've been sailing where Blackbeard goes used to sail in the Outer Banks. So sometime I hope I was him. That's my retirement plan. I want to yeah. so, get a boat and become a pirate of the Caribbean. Yeah, pirate, but why not? So what people are doing is that they made a business out of it. So the business is the following, that whatever got, you got data will corrupt it or we will encrypt it, and then we're going to ask for money. Like, then we have to give proof of life. Apparently, the computer doesn't have to give proof of life. Uh, and then they'll give you the key, and it'll take you six months to restore. Swear to God, people who have been affected by it, to this day, they're not fully recovered. Uh, and it makes everybody upset. And then uh, there's a company that gives you insurance, known as cyber insurance people, a lot of them uh, have gone out of business. And it's very difficult to get a cyber insurance. So much so, last day we decided to insure ourselves. Then finally we got one person to give it. This year we had a good cyber insurance and we actually decreased our cost by seven million. If you ever want to know how we did that, we'll tell you. So the fear that you're talking about is real. It's not fear, it's real. And different ways of protecting yourself. Like I told you as a joke that if we could have memorized our data, then nobody can take it out, right? Uh, but if you put on a tape backup, tape backups are also encrypted. But to restore them takes a long time. Uh, you also have to get the OS and the schema and everything, right? So that didn't work. Digital backup you did. So people like me who, who like to be a pirate started uh, we're not stupid. If we're going to attack you, we'll also attack your backup because how else are you going to pay me? So they became more smart on that. Uh, and they started coming from everywhere uh, because it's very hard to keep up with the updates, patching. Uh, and we are in healthcare, like I told you. We are 624 applications. We got rid of 324 and nobody said, gee. But we didn't even know they existed. So that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's hard. And, you know, we are a safe country. We are very nice people. But the thing is that those vulnerabilities are attacked every day. Then what happened to us is that even though we make the backup, we have to bring it back. Uh, health system, that even though who got the encryption, who were not in the cloud, you got to go by the server. In this economy and in this supply chain, you can't go by servers. Like, try to buy something from Best Buy. It does not meet your specification. So the request is, 
if you are in the cloud, then you can restore in the cloud easily, quickly, faster. But most of healthcare is not. Then what happens is that, I'm just going to tell you in one more minute, we'll go to the reason why to, we went towards Veritas. As we were thinking, here's what we do. When there's an e-discovery, we're very smart. We just take a part, collapse it, make a copy, keep it secretly so general counsel can get it. Uh, and then do not destroy. Things like that. Uh, there is a name for it. This is just dumb, come, some, I can't even say litigation that. Litigation hold. Yeah, yeah, litigation in the Latin, I can't say that. So we're good at it. When we were talking to uh, Veritas, first of all, I talked to their CEO. If you don't know him, get to know him. He's a swell guy, nice to hang out, and, but also has a good vision for his company. Uh, and will take the company in a better place. And the people who work there, like Rick, uh, Mo, uh, they're good people. So, gentleman sitting in the back, I'll introduce you to him later. So I got to know the company and the culture of the company. One of the things that impressed me about the company and the culture of it was that they really wanted to, they have covered everything here. He mentioned this couple of times, that he de-dupes it. Uh, maybe some of you paid attention to it, maybe you understand what it is. What it really means, they take this bigger data, shrink it to this much, so your delivery cost is low and your storage cost is low. Think about that. Then the, he, he said something like, uh, we'll bring it back for your ransomware. Think about that. Uh, he just ran through, brrr, like, because he knew the whole stuff. But every line that he said, was designed for the customer. Every line that he said was designed for us. He didn't say, just say, come to my uh, 215, the booth. So what, you, what, what I'm trying to tell you by saying that, that this company is actually paying attention to the pain point of the customer. Second, what they are trying to do, they're trying to create a place where the bad guy can't get to it. So they have it on-prem. Now, of course, I'm not supposed to tell you, but I'll tell you anyway because geez, I can say anything I want. But they're they are doing it in the cloud as well. Uh, An air gap by itself is not going to protect you. You got to have other mechanism to protect yourself. So they're trying to do that too. When I heard all of that, the cost and the obsession uh, to take the pain away from the customer, what better company to partner with? And also forward thinking, working hard, and also remember, when they come to the institution like us, we're also not easy to work with. We have different types of people who are different. So first they took care of the on-prem. Now they're taking care of the cloud part. Even though we have seven copies, when we went live, now you cannot mention this to anybody, we had 5,000 copies of our entire environment. One more time, 5,000. 5,000. Yeah, then we suddenly realized we have too many copies. It was going to cost us a lot one month, so we started bringing it down to seven. Because we are paranoid people. We're not right. Uh, we are always afraid. Uh, still, I'm afraid. And the part, when you partner with them, then they get afraid for you also. And that's a good thing that the two, three people are afraid. But they are all at the same time, they make it easy. Having said that, the technology-wise, they're mature. Uh, customer satisfaction-wise, they're mature. And lastly, I can tell you, I met a couple of them last night. Uh, we went for a, a drink. I had soda water, just to let you know that. Uh, I'm, I'm not good enough for drinking yet. But when I grow up, I'll get to it. Uh, having said that, I met a couple of people, and they were so enthusiastic. They're part of my customer team, they knew all my people more than I knew my people, just to let you know that. So that's the reason for partnering with Veritas as a company, that it knows how to assess your place, assess all your data endpoints, then assess your applications, and help you consolidate them, help you take it on the prem if you want, and then take it to the cloud if you want, and care the and create the air gap, but not only for legal purposes. God forbid something bad happens.
then you can come back. I use a technical term, Likert split. Uh, other, for those of you who don't know what Likert split means, pretty much fast. Because the business people are on your head. They don't want any disruption. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason. You know, some of those features that I'm awful proud about is that 100% of our appliance customers have been recoverable. And I knock on wood every time I say that, just because you never know what the next threat's gonna rely. Another thing that I was really impressed with is that our technology was built from the beginning with the zero trust architecture, which has just now become, um, it's an executive order, but it'll be part of NIST very shortly. And the last thing that I think is important that everybody needs to know is that you know, everybody's got an immutability. Our immutability is truly unique in that there's no other solution in the industry that has a separate and protected immutability timer, meaning that it cannot be hacked. And that's different than any other solution out there. We can also apply that immutability with that timer into S3 cloud resources to be able to protect. Yeah, that's, the, that's a very nicely said. I'm also in the secretly trying to develop a ransomware-proof environment. And uh, this, this technology adds to it. And if you can afford it, nice to have uh, two different places. Uh, no, I can't say this then it's publicly speaking here, but uh, you should diversify your portfolio. So some of us want to be, this is the AWS meeting. I love AWS, put things in AWS. But I'm also a multi-cloud person. So you need a solution from a company that would not only work for AWS, but also for other cloud. Did you hear one word? Again, he said, egress, ingress. They don't charge you for it, or they include it for it. So what I'm trying to tell you is that they could have asked for extra money, and we would have to pay for it, but they did not. So even though cost is important, if you have a multi-cloud structure, which you should if you don't have it, uh, even though you should use everything from AWS, what I saw yesterday was pretty amazing. Also in the analytics, I saw it was amazing. But you gotta have, sometimes you have to be in some other cloud. So you can't tell that other application, which is in other cloud, since you're my stepchild, I'm not gonna back you up. So not, that's not gonna work. So you need to have a solution that actually takes care of that. No, I'm not taking your thunder away, man. I did pay attention to everything you said. <laughs> now, your design uses not only two availability zones within one region, but you also have an out of region just on AWS. Yes. Since so that's I, incredibly resilient, but also difficult to architect. Yeah, so I'm paranoid, as you know that. If you have not seen it, I, if you have not heard me talking so far, I'm actually afraid. So not only did we do that, when we bought the Amazon's, uh, like when a bad thing happens, so suppose, uh, like you said, some heavy flooding happened and everybody wants to get their data, come back. We haven't bought that component that we are on priority number one. So we get priority over everybody when we come back. But when AWS, uh, uh, like Amazon went down a couple of months ago for a few minutes, the whole world was, out of whack, we didn't go down. We are in a multi-region, uh, dual 100 gig connectivity, uh, double at the same region. So every which way we we architected so that I can keep my job so my children can go to college. <laughs> the motivation is that, not for me. And plus my wife likes to buy Starbucks, so I gotta support that. <laughs> I'm not joking, I should buy stocks in Starbucks. My whole family drinks Starbucks, except mm. for me. Fantastic. I'm so, not joking. I'm not making this up. You don't drink Starbucks? How can you? No, not yet. I don't like paying $5 for a coffee, but I thought everybody had A that. coffee here is $6.39. Starbucks is cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have, what were the challenges, the biggest challenges you had migrating clinical applications? So, challenges in healthcare or in any care, whatever you are, the data. Uh, we have not learned how to keep the data clean. That's one. Second, we have not learned how to transport the data. Third, we don't have data governance. Uh, we also don't understand that data have to be self-service. So I'm just talking in that aspect. Then 
inherently when we bought applications, we never checked whether they were modern or not. Some of you have biomedical devices. I'm telling you, they have Windows 7 on them, man. 95. Okay. So we as an industry have to improve that. So those challenges gives you the opportunity to make it better, understand it. So the challenges are that, and then we wanted to use TLS instead of VPN. VPN decreases the connection to 1.8 gigabit or megabytes, whatever the word is. I think gigabit, 1.8 gigabits. TLS, you can go up to 100 gig. So think about it, right? But everybody who comes to you will say, let's do a VPN. Because, and we'll say, okay, let's do a VPN. Here's a 100 gig pipeline, 1.8 gig. You just throttled yourself to death. Similarly, some applications were not made to go to the cloud. So we had to go after the CEOs, beg them, improve them to come with us to go to the cloud. Because if you become cloud native, it's easier to manage that. So that, those are the real life, uh, uh, I can't say bad things on a stage, but I can say this much, that the fewer people who are sitting in this room, you are the key to the solution. Whatever industry you work in, whatever capacity you work in, you gotta fight for that. Come as one group, move to the cloud, protect your environment, talk to your bosses who give money or like people who have credibility and become a salesperson and try to get their job that has only travel, buy drinks for everybody, take a nap till 10 a.m. I was not joking, but by saying that, what I meant was you all have to become salespeople so that you can sell the better health and better outcome of others by being cloud enabled, by being protective, by decreasing your application, finding the money from there to fund this. That means you gotta be smart enough to do that. That's why if you decrease the cost, every time you talk about cost, but deep in your heart, you're not talking about cost. What you're trying to do, make it easier, better, and trying to safeguard people. For that, you need an army. And you are the army, and what you're doing is fighting for a cause. Cause will live forever. Shafiq will die. No, not really, because I'm gonna download my brain on a neural link and put it on my grave so my grandchildren can have a cognitive discussion with me. But what I'm saying to you, cause will never die, because they will live forever, because your cause is to make things better. The outcome is better. That's what you have to fight for. So do you leverage the cloud for long-term retention? I feel like this is a silly question because I know we just moved 175 terabytes. Okay, so, as, as, so. Uh, so here's the thing, man. Uh, we are a regulated industry. So if it's a child, we have to keep their data for 21 years. So we can't move that. Second, we do research. So in research, you have to have a longitudinal story, you know, like an actuarial does. So you have to have data. Plus now people are doing omics, if you saw the uh, Adams uh, Saplinsky's uh, report. So proteomics, genomics, transcriptomics. So some people are now running those data, those data points that you can have for 100 years, 10 years, 20 years, different sorts of data into those models to create predictability. One of the things you might have seen, if you have not seen it, there was a lady who showed uh, the T cells. Nobody saw that? The batteries? Huh? Okay, let me tell you what it is. It'll take only one minute. People get cancer. So if you have a blood cancer, you can take your T cells out, make them powerful, pump, pump up. Your immune response. Yeah, pump, pump up, and then inject it back. Today, with single injection, you can cure lymphoma with your own bloody... Blood. Lymphoma? Yeah. Take it out. It's known as T cells, arm them. Because the, the cancer people, the cancer elements, they try to exhaust them. Solid tumors don't have that fate yet because we have not made them. So in solid tumor, those T cells, they get exhausted. And then they give up. And then the cancer cell beat them up, punch them. So the best way to, is to take them out, arm them, Make them stronger, pump them up, 
like in an exercise, you are pumped up. So you, you send them in, then they fight it. These kind of research, these kind of, and you, do, you don't need any immuno, this is immunotherapy. So you don't need like toxic drugs into you. So cell, cellular therapy is becoming common. Uh, people are also using, taking viruses sending into you to trigger a response for thalassemia and then sending a second virus to stop the switch and thalassemia is cured. So it's by replication and splicing of the genes. People are doing that gene therapy. To do that, you need copious amounts of data to find about me who it is. There's only two people who know about me. One is God, second is my mother. I have no idea how come she knows me much better than me. She must have a machine learning AI thing in her head. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Because she has seen you forever. In healthcare or in any industry that we work, that information about you and me is only possible if you have data for a long time. Because when you go to a doctor and they see you for cough or they see you for something else, but what you don't know, they don't know your entire story. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, in the future, your entire story will be available for people to decide what course of action you need to do so you can live longer. There are arteries that people have in the heart. People do scan of them. They find plagues today. And you find out a healthy guy who runs died. And unhealthy person like me lived. Why? Nobody knew that. So the plaques that are there, if you put a color in it, you'll find out that the, the, those that are red, that's bad. But those are not red, if you teach them how to prevent it, they become calcified and they actually become protective. So this knowledge, this knowledge of understanding only comes when you retain data for a long time and you have petabytes of data to do your research and you protect it from pirates like me. You know what I'm saying? And to bring back exabytes of data, it's a very hard job. So go by where it does. <laughs> How was the cost model versus on-prem? You were, you were able to achieve a 20% reduction in overall cost by moving it into the cloud. Has the cost been very predictable for you? Oh yeah, now it's 43%. Excellent. We have decreased our cost by 43% by moving to the cloud, and very soon we'll not have any data centers. You just have to be, but you know, all of this, you gotta have friends. Your CFO has to be your friend, your general counsel has to be your friend, and you gotta be a salesperson. Remember the job that I told you. I have that job. Go get it. So you're right, uh, it's all about cost at the end. So that's pretty, that's pretty amazing that you're able to achieve that kind of agility and scale and still lower. Because the team is behind it. You know, the team is also, they bought the cause. Uh, we're trying to innovate. We're trying to go further out. But we, we, we're not the largest health system either. So we don't have tons of money. And plus, we lost a lot of money during this pandemic. And the government that gave us the money, they also took it back. Like we had to give them all the money they gave us before October. So think about it. You know, when people die, they come to us. Well, when they give us money, they take it back. So it's not easy to survive in this place. So you have to be cost conscious. What differentiated? Why did you choose AWS over the multitude of other clouds? Oh, in the beginning, so other people are getting there. AWS is just faster. They're, they're just faster. That's number one, because you have to meet GREVs and IOPS. When we selected them, they are far ahead of everybody, and there are 29 million GREVs. A pretty good man. Second is that uh, there are, uh, I knew Andy Jazzy for a few minutes, uh, a couple other people. It's a, it's, they're a very customer obsessive company. They will not let you fail. Max Peterson, who runs the uh, worldwide uh, solution, phenomenal human being. Uh, Amazon ProServe, very good people. They all came to our rescue. We didn't use any uh, vendor or anybody. We did it ourselves. Uh, our team did it ourselves with their help, of course. And we succeeded in it. So we chose uh, Amazon for that reason, that first, they're customer obsessed. Second, they're always trying to improve themselves. Third, they were the fastest. The other two big companies, they're catching up. Some are nine months behind, some are a little behind, but they will all catch up. Ultimately, everybody will have the speed, 
and it doesn't matter who you go with if Amazon does not keep on making them faster and cheaper. Because at the end, he, will, he or she will win whoever makes it faster, cheaper, and better, and easy to use. Oh, there's a camera there. I didn't see that. Hi. <laughs> Yeah, this would be re recorded and replayed. And oh, please, anybody, <laughs> make it edit, and if I said anything bad, please make it look good. <laughs> we'll edit it before we sit down. Thank you, thank you. So what's, your, what's in the future for your health system? What's in the future for health care in the cloud? So what we are trying to do is that we're trying to become a different type of health system. We're trying to become, uh, so that, let me put it this way, we want, we want access to improve, we want it to be frictionless. We want experience to improve. But at the same time, we want things to be part of the lives of the people that we serve. People are only sick for 5% of their life. Uh, you, you, like, you don't spend all your life being sick. You need a surgery. I want to go I get a heart attack today. Tomorrow I'll get a stroke. It's not like that, OK? Most people have a normal life. They get up. They eat food. Uh, me, I get, I get directions from my wife. She writes me notes. I follow it to the T. That's why I've been married for 26 years. Thank God. So there are certain rules. You have your children who know more than me, according to them. So we got to put up with that. But when they need money, they need money. What I'm saying is that we have regular life. We go to gas station. We go to grocery stores. But during that time, things are happening to our bodies. And we are making behavioral choices. Either they are mental there could be physical, there could be stress. So we are decaying too. Here's the thing, whatever you do, and then you all gotta die. So we all know that, except for me, neural link, you know, computer. What I'm saying is that we want people to have the best of life, best quality of life. We want people to think that there is a place where they can securely, confidently ask questions. And when they need that help, we should be able to provide that. And if we don't provide that service, then we can guide them to go to the best place where they can get it. Because we don't do everything. If you, if you say that, that's lying, right? So, and also to improve, people call it primary care, but I call it overall health care and the quality of life. And also make it possible, so everybody, uh, people talk about, diversity, people talk about ethnicity, people talk about healthcare equity, people talk about social justice, people talk about food as a medicine. All these are very important things. So how do you change all that? Most important thing is that to change all that, we have to provide that information. We have to enable the end user, regardless of where they live, regardless of their socioeconomic status, regardless of their ethnic background, regardless of the, what their belief is, they should have that information and make it possible for them on a phone, on an app, so they can get that, so, to, so that they can get the care they need and the, and, the, and the information that they need. So we want to be that healthcare system where people trust us and we love them. But to do all that, you have to have cloud computing, edge computing, interoperability, a data layer, and a secure place where they have given all their heart and might and have come to you in the most vulnerable way and they told you their dark, deep secrets. We have to protect it and keep it. We are the custodian of that data. We have to give that level of deep thought so that we can serve the people that, that's why we are in healthcare. We're not in healthcare just because we want a job, you know what I'm saying? We have put ourselves for that cause that we are fighting. The, the, there's no reaction, man. Everybody's like all quiet. That's fantastic. I mean, you hope that you work in an industry which you have passion about, and I can't think of anything more important than having passion around keeping people healthy and keeping people alive. Yeah, I'm a patient too. Not a good one, by the way. I'm a miserable patient, actually, because I know all the EMRs and all the tricks. And the, I also know that it's a lot of it's advice. It's not gospel. That's right. Yeah. So um, Dr. Rob, thank you so very much. We're reaching the end of our session here. You're a true innovator in the industry, and we appreciate it very much coming and talking on our behalf. Oh, man, uh, it's, it's my pleasure. 
Uh, I wish there were more people in this room, but next time we'll get in Venetian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what it is. It's, it's spread out everywhere. Mm -hmm. People have different meetings going on. But I hope you got something out of it, people who mm -hmm. came here.